Kuwait withdraws approval for Call of Duty game which features Saddam Hussein. Kuwait has withdrawn approval for the popular video game Call of Duty, which features the appearance of the late Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. The Middle East nation has not acknowledged the effective banning of the game, which is a key offering of Microsoft-owned developer Activision and is due to be released on Friday. Call of Duty, Black Ops 6 is set, in part, in the 1990s Gulf War and follows CIA operators fighting in the US and the Middle East. Gameplay trailers show burning oil fields a reminder for Kuwaitis who saw Iraqi forces set fire to their fields, causing vast ecological and economic damage. Iraqi troops were said to have set fire to over 700 wells. The song Firestarter by the Prodigy plays at times as well and images of Hussein and Iraq's old three-star flag also appear in footage released by the game's developers. A country's respective authorities need to assign an age certificate rating for a game to be sold within a territory, something Kuwait has not done. The game's popular multiplayer section includes what appears to be a desert shootout in Kuwait, called Scud after the Soviet missiles Hussein fired in the war. Another map is called Babylon after the ancient Iraqi city. Activision acknowledged in a statement that the game has not been approved for release in Kuwait. At this time, the title will not be available for release in the region. As a result, all pre-orders in Kuwait will be cancelled and refunded to the original point of purchase. We remain hopeful that local authorities will reconsider and allow players in Kuwait to enjoy this all-new experience in the Black Ops series. Call of Duty, which began in 2003, is a first-person shooter game set across various conflicts in recent history. It has expanded into an empire worth billions of pounds but has faced past controversy as its gameplay entered the realm of geopolitics. Both China and Russia have previously banned chapters and in 2009 the game allowed players to take part in a militant attack on a Russian airport, killing civilians. Footage shows Palestinians blindfolded and led away by Israeli soldiers in northern Gaza. Footage has surfaced online showing blindfolded Palestinians being led away by Israel Defense Forces IDF, soldiers in northern Gaza. The video shows a group of people in what appear to be hazmat suits being led away by Israeli soldiers near the Indonesian hospital, which lies north of Jabalia, home to one of Gaza's refugee camps. They can be seen walking barefoot with their hands tied behind their back as they are ushered on by soldiers. While has geolocated the footage, which has been circulating today and is believed to have been taken by an Israeli soldier, it is unclear when exactly it was recorded. The location tallies up with IDF footage posted today by the military's Arabic spokesperson on Telegram. The spokesperson claims 150 terrorists were arrested while more than 20,000 Palestinians have fled the Jabalia area. Israel has intensified its operation in northern Gaza over the past few weeks, claiming it is trying to stop Hamas from regrouping. Back in December, footage surfaced of Palestinian men being detained in northern Gaza, with some stripped to their underwear. The video, widely shared on social media, shows those held lined up in rows. Some appear to have their hands tied behind their backs. Israel has been at war with Hamas in Gaza since the militant group's attack in southern Israel on October 7 last year, which saw 1,200 people killed. Israel's military campaign in Gaza has killed more than 42,000 Palestinians, according to Hamas-run local health authorities. Oasis announced special guest for reunion shows. Oasis have announced Richard Ashcroft will be joining them as a special guest on their UK and Ireland tour. The former frontman of The Verve will join Liam and Noel Gallagher for Oasis's long-awaited reunion shows in Manchester, London, Edinburgh, Cardiff and Dublin next year. In a statement on social media, Ashcroft said, As a fan from day one, I was buzzing for many reasons when the news of Oasis's return was announced. 
I can say with no exaggeration that the songwriting talent of Noel and Liam's pure spirit as a lead singer helped to inspire me to create some of my best work. Now it's time to create more memories and I'm ready to bring it. See you next summer. Music is power. Ashcroft, the songwriter behind classic tracks Bittersweet Symphony, The Drugs Don't Work and Lucky Man, said it was Oasis's hit Live Forever that forced him to try and write my own, adding that the band dared to be great. The announcement on Monday was accompanied by a short video montage of Ashcroft with Noel and Liam Gallagher over the years, as the Verve tracks on it played over the top. Respect between the artists has been shared over the years, with Noel dedicating Cast No Shadow from 1995 album, What's the Story, Morning Glory? To Wigan-born Ashcroft. Oasis fans have been pleading for the group to reform since they disbanded in 2009, prompted by a backstage brawl at the Rock and Sane Festival in France. Tickets for the UK and Ireland shows were met with huge demand, selling out on the same day after going on sale back in September. Some fans were left outraged after ticket prices more than doubled for shows during the sale, prompting the government and the UK's competition watchdog to pledge they would look at the use of dynamic pricing. Ticketmaster has previously said it does not set concert prices and its website states this is down to the event organizer who has priced these tickets according to their market value. The first UK Oasis show will take place at Cardiff's Principality Stadium on July 4th. Pizza with a side of cocaine? German Pizzeria rated over best-selling special order. A German pizzeria has been busted after allegedly delivering one of its dishes with a customary side order of cocaine. Police said the restaurant in Dusseldorf, Western Germany, would provide the drug when customers asked for item number 40 on the menu. It is not known how much the pizzeria charged for the special order. That was one of the best-selling pizzas, criminal director Michael Graf von Malka said. The police were first tipped off by food inspectors in March, he added. When drug squad officers began observing the restaurant, they buzzed the restaurant manager's apartment. He then proceeded to throw a bag of drugs out of the window which fell right into the arms of the police officers, according to Dusseldorf police. Police discovered 1.6 kilograms of cocaine, 40G of cannabis and $288,800 in cash. The manager, 36 years old, was detained for a few days. However, he soon reopened the business and continued to sell pizza number 40 with the usual side order, police said. That gave investigators an opportunity to look into the supply chain and after several weeks, some 150 officers busted an entire drug ring in Western Germany, arresting three people, including the 22-year-old suspected head of the operation, and raided homes and businesses of another 12 suspects. Two cannabis farms were also discovered in nearby Mönchengladbach and Zollingen, with 360 plants respectively. The pizzeria's manager was arrested when he tried to escape the country and is still in custody. <laughs> J.K. Rowling turned down peerage twice and would not accept if offered again. J.K. Rowling has revealed she turned down two offers of a peerage and would not accept one if offered again. The Harry Potter author made the revelation after Tory leadership hopeful Kemi Badenoch said she would offer Rowling a peerage after praising her for her contributions to the transgender debate. Rowling posted on X, it's considered bad form to talk about this but I'll make an exception given the very particular circumstances. I've already turned down a peerage twice, once under Labour and once under the Tories. If offered one a third time, I still wouldn't take it. Rowling has been an outspoken figure in the gender debate, frequently advocating for spaces for biological women to be protected, and speaking up about trans issues in the sports industry. The author was among those who welcomed the CAS review into NHS Children's Gender Identity Services, which led to NHS England ending the prescription of puberty blockers for children experiencing gender dysphoria.
Ms. Badenoch told the talk online streaming service that Rowling and Dr. Hilary Cass, the author of the Cass Review, were attacked relentlessly by all sorts of oddballs and bad people. The conservative MP was then asked if she would give Rowling a peerage. She said, I would. I don't know whether she would take it. I certainly would give her a peerage. Lady Cass has been appointed to the House of Lords as an independent after being awarded a peerage by Conservative leader Rishi Sunak earlier this year. Rowling, whose seven Harry Potter books were published between 1997 and 2007, did not say which Labour and Conservative Prime Ministers had offered her a seat in the Lords. She was a vocal supporter of the Labour Party under Gordon Brown, who is also a close friend, but was heavily critical of the party under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. The author has also raised concerns over Labour's position on gender-related issues under Sir Keir Starmer. Rowling has not previously spoken publicly about her views on the honor system but said she did this time to save her from being accused of being right-wing or being disappointed she hasn't got one, a peerage, because of her evil bigotry. Pox, new strain of deadly virus found in Germany. A new, more infectious strain of the potentially deadly Pox virus has been found in Germany for the first time, health chiefs in the country have said. The Robert Koch Institute, RKI, Germany's disease control center, said on Tuesday the risk to the wider population was low but it is monitoring the situation very closely and adjusting its recommendations if necessary. It said the carrier of the clade IB form of the virus was infected abroad but gave no other details, including where the case was being treated. The first case of the Mpox virus variant outside Africa was confirmed in Sweden in August, while one was also reported in Thailand and another in India earlier this month. At least 1,000 deaths have been reported across Africa as of last week, prompting the World Health Organization, WHO, to declare the increasing spread of the disease a global health emergency for the second time in two years. Most of the cases have been recorded in Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, which has seen a total of 5,399 cases and 25 deaths in 2024 up to September 15. Almost 800 cases of Mpox have been confirmed there in the past four weeks, according to WHO, but 18 out of 55 African countries are battling outbreaks of the illness. The total number of suspected cases in Africa since the beginning of the year now stands at 42,438, with 8,113 confirmed as Mpox, according to the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Mpox mostly spreads via close contact with infected people, including through sex. Common symptoms include a skin rash or pus-filled lesions which can last two to four weeks. It also can cause fever, headaches, muscle aches, back pain, low energy and swollen lymph nodes. Most cases are mild but it can be deadly. Earlier this year, scientists discovered a new form of the disease, clade 1b, that they said may cause milder symptoms but spreads more easily through close contact, which was traced to a Congolese mining town. Pox is a viral disease that occurs mostly in Central and Western Africa. It was first identified in laboratory monkeys, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC. Currently there is no treatment approved specifically from pox virus infections, according to the CDC. However, a two-dose vaccine has been developed to protect against the virus. The CDC says that for most patients with mpox who have intact immune systems and don't have a skin disease, supportive care and pain control will help them recover without medical treatment.